Are you oppressed? Are you battling with sickness? Are you struggling with addiction or feeling stuck and you don't know where to turn to? Are you seeking direction or purpose? Or perhaps you're seeking satisfaction and fulfillment? Can God bring a solution to you in just 30 minutes? Oh yes, He can! This program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Tessitani Ministries. You too can be a part of it. God bless you. David knew that when he had the presence of God, he comes to the power of God. And when the power of God shows up, no enemy can Hello. Thank you for tuning in. I am so excited to be here again today. The Lord loves you and he told me to tell you that he cares so much about you. That is the reason that I am here to remind you that Jesus loves you so much and Jesus wants to do life with you. He wants to have a good relationship with you. He wants to live with you and in you and through you jesus wants to do life with you what a royal invitation i call that i thank you father for your love towards us we have been talking about obedience obeying the laws of god the commands of god the word of god and we are still going to continue that today my name is tessie tani and this is your solution hour i just want to pray for you quickly that as we hear the words today your heart be open to receive because listen a lot of people think that the word of god does not work but the word actually works the world works all the time. The problem is not with the world. The problem is with those that are receiving it, the kind of soil that they are planting it. When we receive the word of God, what kind of soil are we planting it? Are we, have we allowed our hearts to be fertile so that we can receive the world with meekness, so that it can have room to grow? That is the only way that it can produce results. Jesus talks about a parable of the seed that has been planted on different types of soil. Some died instantly. Things of this world came to choke it. Some lasted and they produced results. So I want to pray for you quickly, Father. I thank you for those people that have tuned in today, that are watching, listening right now. I pray, Lord, that you make the heart of your people become flesh. Become fertile so that when your word is planted in it today, Lord, it will produce fruit. It will grow and produce fruits. Some of them we have 20 fold, 30 fold, 50 fold. Some we have 70 fold and some even a hundred fold according to the knowledge of your spirit, Lord. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. We give you glory, Lord. What a precious moment. Thank you for tuning in. Let us look into the word of God. We have been talking about obedience and I'm still here to continue on that today. Forgive me if I repeat myself, but it is so worth it because having just word from God and obeying it is much more important than knowing the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation and not leaving it out. God is not looking for us to know the word or to quote the scriptures. He is looking for those who obey. Obedience is very important because obedience is the only thing that can get us to where God desires for us to be. So many people think that they can come to Christ, come out during the altar call, you know, and give their life to Christ and say, Jesus, come into my heart. And then they think that they can go back and start living the previous lifestyle that they used to live before they came to Christ. Salvation, coming to Christ, conversion means staying committed to the confession. It means turning your back on the old lifestyle, the sinful lifestyle, turning your back on the world and turning to Christ. And say, Jesus, become my Lord, become my Savior, become my Master. And for someone to be your Master means He makes the decisions. 
He directs, he leads, he guides. And all you do is just take instructions and follow. The Lord wants us to wake up as Christians to that place of obedience where we look at his word and we take it, hide it in our heart and begin to live according to the precepts of the Lord. We were reading last week. I want us to open our Bibles again today quickly. We're still using the opening scripture, which is Hebrews. Hebrews 2 verse 1 to 3. I read quickly says, we must pay careful attention. Therefore, I'm reading from the NIV. We must pay the most, the most, the most careful attention. Therefore, to what we have heard. So that we do not drift away. We must pay careful attention to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. The only way to help ourselves from not drifting away from this gospel, from this salvation that God has freely given us, is by paying careful attention to his word, to his command. We cannot have double life. We cannot come to Christ and partially obey Him and partially obey our self-will, our desires, our sinful desires. We cannot give in to our flesh at the same time claiming, professing to be children of God, to be Christians. So this topic is really important and that is the reason that the Holy Spirit has got us to keep going on it. He has got us here for a reason and I want to share some of those reasons with you today. I shared with you last week and the week before some of the importance, some of the why it is so important for us to obey. I told you last week or two weeks ago that God is not looking for sacrifice. God is looking for obedience. In Isaiah chapter 1, the people would live in disobedience to God and then they would come back and present burnt offerings to him. After a while, the Lord said, I don't want your burnt offerings. What I need from you is obedience. What the Lord needs from us today is not just our tithes and our offerings. It's not just our church attendance. It's not just having the titles and the positions before our name in church or ministry. What the Lord is seeking for from us today is obedience. Living in our life accordance to his word, to his precepts. That is what God is looking for having the fear of the Lord in our heart being able to say I have opportunity to be greedy here I have opportunity to be greedy no one is watching but because God is watching me I must live in obedience to his word that say greed is not good you can have the opportunity to be able to take something without nobody knowing but you should be able to say Integrity is more important than any temporal gain. Because of God, I am not going to compromise. You can have the opportunity to be angry or to be bitter or to hold on to what somebody did to you. But you're going to say, because the Lord does not want me to live in unforgiveness. Therefore, I am going to ask. I'm going to pray to the Lord and ask him to help me to forgive. That is what we are talking about. That is the Christianity that we are talking about. Living our life in accordance with the precepts of the Lord. That is what God is desiring to see in us. God wants us to obey him because so many people, like I was saying, have no idea that what it means to be a Christian is to actually live like one. Not just to profess it, to say I'm a Christian. Not just to go to church buildings, but to live as one. To live as Christ lived. To look to the world and say, how did Jesus live so that I can live that way? How did Jesus forgive so that I can forgive that way? Jesus had opportunity to destroy those. He had the power to destroy those who were against him. But he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. How many of us are living our lives in such a way that we live out God's command? The Holy Spirit wants to help you, wants to help me. It is the desire to help us. But we have to come in humility and say, Lord, there I am. 
Help me to grow in these areas. Help me to obey your command. Number one, obedience allows God to take the place of lordship in our lives. In Ezekiel eleven twenty, that they may walk in my statutes and keep my judgment and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. So doing God's command, obeying his word, allows you to be his people and allow God to be your God. Allow him to be your God. Number two, he removes self and places God at the center psalm 119 says your word i have hidden in my heart that i may not sin against you when you read the bible you don't just leave the word of god on the pages of the bible you take it and you hide it in your heart you hide it in your heart the word of the lord says i should allow my thoughts to think about things that are good things that are pure when you take that word, you hide it in your heart. You don't leave it in the pages of the Bible. So when you're going about your day and a thought comes to you and you say, this thought is not holy. This thought is not pure. This thought is not good. It's not of God. Therefore, I cast it out and I choose not to dwell on it. See, that is how you are beginning to obey. That is how you're living in obedience to the word of God. It is simple. You just need to study it and say, oh, this is how God wants me to live okay and then hide it in your heart and then begin to live according to that and when you see areas that the word of the lord tells you to stop doing those things and you're struggling you say holy ghost i cannot stop this myself i shouldn't even attempt to do it myself please help me possess this area possess me and help me to live according to god's command that is how you live in obedience to God's command. Number three, it brings us into relationship where we become one with God. John 15, 10 says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. Remember, Jesus kept his father's commandment and abided in God's love. So also you and I must keep God's commandment and abide in his love. Number four, it demonstrates our love for God. I shared this last week or two weeks ago. I'm just going through it quickly again. It says, John 14, 21 says, Jesus says, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. Those who obey God's commandments and obey them are the ones who truly love him. Not those who just say it. Not those who quote the scriptures. Not those who say, Jesus, I love you. He says, you love me? obey my commandments because those who obey my commandments are those who truly love me thank you father number five it proves to others that we truly love god and that we belong to him john 13 35 says by this all we know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another and remember the commandments we are talking about. Jesus told us that the entire commandment is summed up in loving God and loving our neighbor. And here Jesus is saying that this is the way that the world, the people will know that you love me. If you have love one for another. Thank you, Father. So our love for God and our love for one another help the world to know that we truly belong to God. We are supposed to be identified by the way we love God and the way we love our neighbors. And also, number six, obedience affirms our righteous living. In Romans 2.13, for merely listening to the law does not make us right with God. This is Apostle Paul speaking. It is obeying the law that makes us right in his sight. The Apostle Paul said, just listening to the law. Just, is, that's not what makes us right with God. But obeying the law is what makes us right. Is what makes us right in his sight. So, so many people think that obeying God's word is not something we really need to focus on anymore. Once saved, forever saved. I have never seen that in the Bible. So the people that uphold that, I don't know where they got it from. I have never seen once saved forever saved in the Bible. What I've seen in the Bible is that I have been forgiven, not because of my works, but now that I have been forgiven, 
Jesus' expectation is that I turn to him and start living according to the new life that I've been freely given. If you also look at 1 John 2, from verse 3 to 6, he said, we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, listen to this, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. If somebody says, I love God, but yet the person is not living according to God's word, the scripture here says that person is a liar. If somebody says I'm a Christian, but yet this person watches pornography, the scripture here says that person is a liar. If somebody says I'm a Christian, and yet the person is saying homosexuality is right, that person is a liar. The scripture is saying if somebody says I'm a Christian, and yet the person gives in to all manner of sinful lust, sinful desire, fornication the scripture here says that person is a liar if somebody says i love god and yet the person is committing adultery the scripture here says that that person is a liar and that person is not living in truth and the truth is the word of god jesus is the word of god jesus is truth and anyone not living in jesus my god my God is heading towards danger, danger of eternal flames of hell. These things I'm sharing with you, they are very important. This is what Christianity is about. This is what Christianity is about. Living according to God's precepts. Hallelujah. This is how we know we are living in him. Listen, let me read verse 6. It says, those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Thank you, Father. Should live their lives as Jesus did. He's saying, don't just say it with your mouth, but live it out. I remember sharing the story of a man, a young man who was with a wife in the kitchen and telling the wife, Oh, I love you so much, baby. I can do anything for you. I can even go to the moon and come back for you. The wife was cooking. There were so many dishes in the sink. And this man is standing there professing, that I love you. And the wife said, Oh, baby, you don't even need to go to the moon. Just do the dishes in the sink. So Jesus is saying, You love me? Keep my commandments. You love me? Learn to forgive. You love me? Learn to let go when people hurt you. You love me, learn to do my will. You love me, live according to my word. You love me, you cannot love me and be addicted to other things. He says you cannot have to God. You love me, you have to live for me. You cannot be in between myself and the world. I so much like it when Elijah told the people, he said, how long will you linger between two opinions? It says, if God be God, worship God, follow God. But if Baal be Baal, be your God, then follow Baal. It said, do not be in between two opinions. Do not linger between two. Because God is a jealous God. If you love him, keep his commandments. Thank you, Father. I'm going to share with you also that obedience number seven. Obedience attracts God's love towards you. John 14, 21 says, and because they love me, Jesus says, because they love me, my father will love them and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. God's desire is to reveal himself to you, but you need to come to him and begin to obey his commands and begin to live according to his word and have an intimate, vibrant, profound Love relationship with God so that God can begin to reveal himself to you in such a way that you've never seen before. Number eight, you will begin to encounter God and have specific revelations about him. Thank you, Father. Listen, when you come into relationship with God, when you begin to cultivate relationship with him, when you have the fear of God in your heart and begin to live according to his precepts, listen, God we begin to give you encounters that you've never experienced before. Thank you, Jesus. 
Number nine, you will live in the presence of God. Listen to uh, uh, um, what Jesus said in verse 23. He says, all who love me will do what I say. My father will love them and we will come and make our home with each of them. With each of them. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He sees everything that everyone do. But there is a big difference between that general presence of God and the intimate presence of God. Where he keeps his presence with you. Where God lives with you. Where divinity takes a boat in you. He lives in you and he lives with you. When you are driving, you are with God. When you are cooking, you are with God. When you are in your bedroom, you are with God. When you are in your shower, you are with God. You are always in His presence. There is no separation. Tell me what demons can come against you. Against you when you have the presence of God with you all the time. I always tell people that the only way to keep the enemy out is to keep Christ in. So many people don't know those things that I'm sharing with you. This is what Christianity is about. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. And number 10, you will begin to experience fullness of joy. Psalm 16, 1 says, In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Once you have God's presence with you, you will experience fullness of joy like you've never done before. Hallelujah. Not just half joy. But fullness, joy to the full. And number 11, I'm going to share with you quickly. Obeying God's word secures eternal life for us. John 8, 51, listen to this. Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. Listen, the only people who will be raptured are those who obey. The only people who will be raptured are those who obey. God is not looking for partial sacrifice, I tell you. Just like every violation and disobedient received its just punishment, like we read in Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 1 to 3, so also eternal salvation is given to those who obey. Jesus let us know here, these are not my words. You cannot live in disobedience. You cannot live in fornication. You cannot live in adultery, in all manner of sin, in addictions to all manner of things, to drugs and alcoholism and claim that you are a Christian you're just waiting for Jesus to return and take you home. Jesus let us know here that the only people who will be raptured are those who obey. Jesus let us know here in John 8 51 that eternal salvation belong to those who obey. He says those who obey me will never see death. How do you live in obedience to God? Number one, repent and hate sin with all your heart. Make Jesus your friend. Ask the Lord to help you to live in obedience to him. That's number three. Number four, you must be conscious of God's presence. You must know all the time that whatever you are doing or wherever you are at, even though no one is there seeing you, God is there. He sees you. When you are conscious of his presence, you will know that you do not want to do anything to grieve the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Also, number four, you must study the word of God. Before I go to number four, listen to what Genesis 39, 9, Joseph and Potiphar's wife, Joseph said, how then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed or even with her. Listen to what Joseph said. He said, how can I do such a thing and sin against God? No man was there with Joseph. Joseph was there alone with Potiphar's wife, but Joseph was conscious of God. He said, how can I do this kind of thing even though nobody sees me? God sees me. How can I do this thing and sin against my God? We should carry that consciousness of God all the time that we do not want to do something to sin against God. And number four, like I said, you must study the word of God and hide it in your heart like I shared before. You must study his word so that you can live in obedience to the word. And number five, keep your eyes on the goal, your eyes on Jesus. Uh, Hebrews 12, 1 to 2 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
Jesus endured everything because he kept his eyes on what the Lord has called him to do. So keep your eyes on Jesus and say, Lord, I'm going to obey you. I'm not going to allow myself to be distracted. I'm not going to allow the flesh, the lust, and the desires of this world to choke up your salvation that you've freely given to me. I want to pray with you right now. If you've at once, you know, were obeying God and you drifted into the world and started living a sinful lifestyle, or if you've never given your life to Christ, I want you to say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me today. Forgive me, wash me clean by your blood. Come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. From today, I am now your child. I give my life to you and help me to live a life of obedience to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Right now, I pray for the Holy Spirit to help you to live according to God's commands. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God loves you. Thank you for being a part of this program. Join us same time next week for another fresh episode.